Hey, what's going on guys? It's Lider Havoc here and we are back with some 10 minute tutorials and today we are getting started with Matter Overdrive. Matter Overdrive doesn't seem to have a lot of information about it out there, uh, wiki wise, or even some of the videos out there. They're kind of quick, fast, don't really explain too much. And so I thought I'd break this one up into like a four or five part series, kind of going over the basics of the mod, because it is a really cool mod that, you know, I don't think it's getting the credit that it deserves. And so I thought, hey, why not uh, go ahead and put it together? So without further ado, we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. The first thing you're going to want to make is the, well, it's basically the book, I guess you would call it. I mean, it's not really a book, but basically what it is, it's the book for, it's a pad. Um, I think it's called a pad, something like that. Yeah, it's a data pad, and the data pad is pretty simple to make. Um, oh, I hate when I do that. It's basically just a book with this isolinear uh, Mark One circuit, or isolinear circuit Mark One, and that's nothing but some iron, um, redstone, and glass. Really, really cheap to make, and so I'm going to go ahead and just grab myself one of these, and a book, and I'm going to go ahead and just craft this bad boy up real quick. Oh, I guess I should probably be in survival if I'm going to do that. So just take the book take that and now I've got this data pad and the data pad is pretty cool because it actually works I think similar to the matter scanner like see it's it's scanning the block and but if you right click off into the distance it actually kind of gives you all the machines now the book I, I'm gonna keep calling it a book because I don't know what else to call it I mean it's a data pad but whatever it's a book um, the book is still pretty incomplete there's a lot of pages that don't have you know uh, information about them like I noticed it in the weapons down here um, like you go here, there's no info for the weapon station. The armor has no info. The guns, I mean, and some of the stuff does, but some of the stuff doesn't. So it's it's not horrible, but you know, like I said, it seems like it's just a work in progress. And uh, but it does have information about the stuff that you're going to want for the mod, right? Okay, cool. So that is going to be the first thing you want to do because, like I said, it's going to be kind of your go-to and it's a pretty easy little thing to get around it kind of just shows you everything and you know it shows you all the crafting recipes and everything so it's useful but we don't really need to mess with that too much right now and i'm going to go back into creative mode because we're just going to go ahead and get started on the first few objects that you're going to want when uh starting off with matter overdrive and the first one is going to be this molecular inscriber now the molecular inscriber is pretty simple to make it's iron, it's some of this dilithium crystal, which you can find, you know, in the earth naturally. Titanium plate, which is two tit titanium ingots, which is also naturally found in the, uh, <clears throat> the, on the map. And then this little machine casing, they're pretty simple, it's just titanium, two of these, some gold, some redstone, cool, 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 cool. And we get this molecular inscriber. And the reason we want this molecular inscriber is because one of the first, uh, like, usable blocks we're going to want is this pattern storage. And the pattern storage is going to need a isolinear mark three two and one so basically well, let me grab another one of those actually we're going to grab three of them just to kind of show you so you go over to your um oh you know i forgot the battery you're going to go over to your molecular inscriber here and just give it a little power source and what we do is we just put this guy right here and as you can see, the battery's powering it up, so it's getting juice here. And then right here is where you're going to add whatever material you need to upgrade it. So to make <coughs> um, uh, isolinear Mark One into a Mark Two, you just add some gold, and you'll see that the uh, progress bar starts going right there. And then you know I'm gonna go grab these other two. And then when it's done, it'll be a Mark Two over here. And this is basically one of the key components. Mark ones, twos, and threes are used pretty often. Now, if we want a Mark three, we just take our Mark two here, put in a diamond, you'll see the progress bar, and then we're gonna get the Mark three over here. So, to make the pattern storage, as I said before, you're gonna need a Mark three, two, and one with some titanium, a chest, some black wool, and then this machine casing, and this will give you the pattern, uh, pattern storage. Now, the reason for the pattern storage is where this guy kinda comes into play. So I'm going to actually go ahead and copy this batter here <clears throat> and plop it in here. Now, you could create these uh, 
uh, you know, any type of energy source from any other mod, but there is an energy source that comes with Matter Overdrive, and we're probably going to get in that in the next episode of the tutorial. But for right now, I've just got these uh, creative batteries. You can make regular batteries right here, and they're not expensive to make at all. It's titanium, gold, redstone, and dilithium crystal, and or uh, dilithium crystal. That gives you a battery. And then if you're fortunate enough to uh, happen across, you know, any of these, you know, man-made maps and stuff like that, or uh, not man-made, but uh, map generated, naturally generated, or whatever. You can just take your battery and pop it in there, and if there was a charge, which there's not right now, it would charge up the battery. I think there's no power to it, so I don't know. So, so then you get your Isolinear Mark III right there. Cool, cool. And uh, batteries can be charged using a charging station, or you can actually just use. I'm using Creative for you know in you know this moment right now or whatever. But you could just power them with any type of like thermal expansion. I mean, they're all um, interconnected, and so they all will work. And we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna get to power probably in the next tutorial. But I just want to get through these items real quick. So we've got our molecular inscriber to make our uh, isolinear circuits. We've got our pattern storage here, and now we've got to put a pattern drive in. Now with the pattern drive, this is actually going to hold information for us using our matter scanner. Now if you see, nothing's happening right now because my matter scanner is not connected to anything. But if I go ahead and click it into here, you'll see the screen turns on, and now it's linked to this pattern storage. So if I start holding, you'll see this is grass block matter 1km, and it's going to destroy the block. And now it says that progress is now at 10%. And if I keep doing this and like, you know, another, well, eight times now, eventually it'll get to 100%. And this will basically say, see, it says grass block 30%. Once it's at 100%, we can start using it for some very, very useful stuff. And we'll probably get to that, not in the next episode, but maybe the episode after that. But we'll, we'll get to it. Like I said, I'm going to try to keep these short, fast, and, you know, get you guys as much information as possible. But this could be, you know cumbersome after a while just walking around and clicking on these blocks I mean it just could be kind of annoying so what I highly advise is making it as soon as possible is this matter analyzer right here now what the matter analyzer does if I put this guy in here and link it oh I need to grab a power source so we'll put a power source in there we'll put him in there and then we just throw some blocks you'll see that you're gonna start getting these Oh, I gotta take that guy out of there. As power goes up, it'll start. Oh, I'm not linked into the system. I should probably do that. Um, I know I've got the cable somewhere. And I will explain these cables a little more later. But uh, we got some matter network cable here. And um, does it have to be out the back? Can I do it in the bottom? Nope. I think it has to be out the back. It's okay, I can put power there. So we connect these, and now these are interconnected. So this will start getting a reading of these grass blocks here, and then it will actually send information over to this once it's complete. And there it goes. See, there's the little bars. It's reading grass, and it's finishing analyzing those there. So that is pretty nifty. Put those blocks there. And then I can just run power to this bad boy. Oops on top I guess there we go and this guy right here doesn't well I, it, I can just run the power like that Boom. there we go so that's interconnected now so these are all powered up and you know doing their thing and just like when I was breaking these blocks over here it is going to use these blocks but the reason that this comes in really handy is because well let's see is it 40 now oh, it's 60 so it's a little more useful uh, three blocks gave me 30 or four whatever it was that one gave me a couple but what happens is, like, say if I've got this guy just sitting on the ground here, right? Well, I can't take the matter scanner to it. Like, it's it, it's not seeing the emerald there. It's still just seeing the blocks behind it. But this guy, if I throw the emerald in here, it can start reading the emerald. And it can start, um, you know, getting the data for that. And, yeah, it's going to be kind of expensive because I believe you get about 20% per instead of just 10. So it's going to take five emeralds to get it. But that is going to come in really, really helpful when we get to uh, the next episode. 
where we're going to go over the uh, decomposer and the replicator and how all this stuff can interconnect together. So I'm going to go ahead and stop right here and just kind of introduce you to that. that is scanning matter and getting the data from all of our matter. And then now in the next episode, we're going to go ahead and talk over why that's actually useful, why we want to be able to um, get all this data. See, now it's done. It ate up the emerald. And now it says that it's got 20% of an emerald. So we're going to go ahead and uh, finish that one up as well as maybe our best friend in the game, as we all like our diamonds here. So I might grab like five of these and I'm going to go ahead and throw them in there and we'll come back in the next episode and we'll see why these are useful. So until next time, guys, I'm Slaughter Havoc. This is 10 minute tutorials. We are doing matter overdrive. Peace.